Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, we are going to be covering a sort of classic DaVinci Resolve coloring technique, and that is changing the color of an object inside of DaVinci Resolve. So, hopping into DaVinci Resolve, we see we've got this great shot from the House Lutz promo video, which is just ripe for the picking for this sort of thing. So, we will pretend like, even though yellow is a great color, we don't want it. We want it to be, let's say, pink. So the first thing we're going to do is just sort of get a base grade going on here. So you can, you know, twiddle with your contrast or stuff. Or if you're lazy like me, you're just going to use a LUT that you made. So if you don't have the house LUTs, you should get them. But if you don't feel like getting them, then uh, what this basically does is just add some contrast and saturation. So cool. Now we have a nice crunchy look going on. The next thing we'll do is add a serial node and then a layer node. I like to do my corrections like this inside a layer node so I can bring the opacity back or up make it nice and easy. And you totally could do this without a layer node, but once again, it just makes my life easier mentally, I guess, doing it in a layer node. Anyway, so now we'll hit Shift H to go in our highlight mode and go to our qualifiers tab and make a rough selection of the kayak. And now you see we're good. We have all this stuff on the ground and we don't want that. So what we'll do to fix that is add a power window. And you could probably get away with like a circle one, but we're going to go hardcore and do an actual power curve. So click on this, and you'll be able to add a nice little Bezier spline around your kayak. It'll be nice and easy. Everyone thinks will think that you are very cool. So now that that is done, we'll go through and just sort of neaten this up a little bit. Bring this around. Pull these guys out. And it doesn't need to be perfect. This isn't like a rotoscope. This is just sort of more like a garbage mat for a key. So think of it like that. Because it really, really is kind of a garbage mat for a key. So that is looking pretty decent. And the next thing that we'll do is, since this obviously does not follow our kayak through the shot, is we will track it. And this is a great opportunity to show how very decent the little 3D tracker is on here. So normally I unclick that because it'll cause problems, but for shots like this, it makes life better. So first I'll track backwards, beautiful, and then I'll go forward a little bit and track forwards, nice. And it's not perfect, but that is easy to fix. So I'll go back to our starting point, go to corrector four in our keyframes window, add a keyframe for power curve, right click, add dynamic keyframe, just to make life a little easier. Make sure everything is looking good, which it wasn't. So now go back a few frames and then make sure that auto keyframing is on because that makes life easier. And then refine your mat just a little bit and bring it forward a few frames. That's looking pretty decent, but I like that in there. Very cool. And just go through real quick and finish touching this up. Beautiful. And now that we have our basic sort of selection done, we can go and refine this key a little bit. So you'll see it's getting some hair and some funny shadow stuff and just basically is not a very pleasant key. So I'll go back to our key tab and we will twiddle around with this. Play with our luminance. Good and low soft. See what our highs do. Yeah, I'd like to include those. High soft and normal whenever you add in highs, you gotta add some more saturation doops. Alright, now that's looking good. Now play around with our hue. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere. And then we'll finally move over to our sort of clip black controls and clip white. Clean black, clean white, add a little bit of blur, let it expand out just a bit. And now we are going to be ready to do a quick little correction. Now it's better to change the color little bits and not lots because that will kind of make things gross. And in my experience, changing the luminance value will really bring out any noise in your key. So you want to avoid that. I remember doing a big old project with someone and they tried to increase the luminance just a part, a very complicated part, and it was just looking terrible. So just sort of shift the hue for this and that will end up with the best results. So you can do that by shifting the hue curve here and now we can see 
sweet. I got a pink kayak. I'm not sure if that's the color I said when we were starting out, but look at that. That looks pretty decent. And you know, you can shift around because pink is relatively close to yellow, but you can make it go all the way to like blue, which is the opposite of yellow. And you can see we can definitely tell bad stuff is going on now. So you don't want to move it too far, but whenever it's pink, that stuff is still there, but just not as annoying. And you can, of course, always refine your keys more or just shoot with the correct color thing, which I know isn't always an option, but you could definitely go through and add some other masks on here, which will make the layer node handy. So let's say I'm gonna get that hair out of there, hair out of there, and we'll make it a little harder. And we'll just track it like this and then we will make it correct because you can track with a bigger shape and then go through and change the mask shape. So that is super easy, super handy dandy. Oh, and that's the case whenever you do not want to use the 3D thing because it just makes bad stuff happen. So there we go. Nice and easy. Now we'll bring it back and make it really small and make sure it doesn't get anywhere. We don't want it to be. Anyway, you get the idea. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meast Media YouTube channel. If you want to get your hands on the House Let's Pack, which is excellent, go to meastmedia.com slash products, where we also have the Bright Light Sight Leak Pack, which has recently been updated to include ProRes versions of all the files. So it's a gigantic file, but oh boy. I personally use them all the time to the point where it's probably obnoxious, but people still love them. So go check them out. Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.